All right, so it's good to have you here. Before Boston comes, I got two things I just want to make sure that I say from up here. Number one, if there is space between you and somebody else, uh, our ushers are looking to seat some people. Uh, so if you can, if you can move in or out, whatever it is to kind of close that gap, that's going to help our ushers. They're looking to find some more seats, which is a wonderful thing to have so many people here with us this morning. So if you could help us out and just kind of squeeze in a little bit, um, that will make it a lot easier on our ushers to help some of these families find a, a chair to sit in uh, this morning. Also, I want to make sure if you need Spanish translation, we do have Spanish translation available in the back. Just go ahead to the back there. If you need an a, um, earpiece or anything like that, they'll be translating to help you with that this morning. So we just want to make you know, uh, make you aware of that as well. Well, are you guys ready for Boston to come? Yes. All right. Well, Boston Backert is um, going to be coming here and, and providing some wonderful opportunities for us to just have some fun. Um, Boston is known for juggling. He's known for some circus acts. He's got some illusions. He has some comedy. And he's going to be asking some of you as an audience to be participating with him. He'll also be sharing uh, some of his personal story with you and how that ties to his faith in Jesus Christ. Um, to kind of give you some other uh, ideas of who Boston is, he has been uh, with studying under Brett Myers and Dwayne Laffin. We've actually have, we've had uh, Brett Myers here a couple of times for this same event. And he's also been training under nine-time Guinness World Record holder ne Niels Dwinker. And so um, he has also done over 600 different performances. Everybody say, whoa. Whoa, that's a lot. He's also uh, been at the theme parks such as Dutch Wonderland and other areas performing his acts. And so this, this morning, as he comes, as Boston comes, let's hear it for him. Let's give him a big round of applause and make some noise for Boston Backer. How's everybody doing? Are you guys ready to have a fun can jam? Yeah? Are you guys ready to have a fun can jam? Yeah? All right, here we go. Watch close. What do we think? One ball juggling. Balls. Here we go. Or three Easter eggs for Can Jam.
I think it's time for some circus. Here we go. Behind the back. Thank you, thank you very much. My name is Boston Bockert, and I'll be your daring and magical performer here today. Now, today you're gonna see a whole lot of magic, a whole lot of juggling, a whole lot of circus arts, and I'm also gonna share with you a little bit about my story. And I hope by the end of today, my story can be a little bit of part of your story as well. But to begin the show today, I'd like to get all of you involved in an illusion of your own here today. That's right, I need all of you to the front, to the back, to the sides, and to the middle. To take your arms and stick them straight out like this. It's okay if you're touching the person next to you. You're just meeting someone new here today, all right? Now wiggle your fingers. It creates an awkward yet ominous mood here in the sanctuary today. Now fix your fingers. Bring your arms in just like this. Clap once. Clap twice. Clap three times. That's my show. Thank you very much. I'm just kidding. Stick your arms out. Bring them in just like this. Wiggle your thumbs. Turn your thumbs down just like this. Take your right arm, put it over your left arm. Some of the adults in the back are having a little trouble. It's okay, right over left, now we got it. Clasp your fingers, thumbs pointed straight down. Take your thumbs and turn them up. Go ahead, do this. You're gonna be a wonderful audience. Give yourselves a round of applause. Like I said, folks, I'm gonna be sharing a little bit about my story today, and by now I think some of you have realized Part of my story involves juggling. You see, you may be seeing me juggle here on stage, and you may think you're seeing me juggle one ball, followed directly by four, but in reality, I'm actually juggling three balls, followed by six. You may be so sure that what you're seeing me juggle here today is one ball, followed by four, but in reality, it's actually three balls, followed by six. You see, friends, I'm also an illusionist. You see, I specialize in magic as well, but it's important for me to let all of you know that the magic and illusion you're seeing here on stage today is just that. It's an illusion. You see, it's just a trick of the eye. I believe Jesus Christ does the real miracles. I just do the tricks. And by now, I think some of you have caught on to this trick. You see, similar to juggling, it's all about where I put my hand. That's right, if I put it here, it looks like six. If I put it here, it looks like four. If I put it here, it looks like one. And if I put it here, it looks like three. But there's in fact two cards on this side and five cards, or five dots, on this side. Now, juggling is um, not an illusion. It takes lots of practice and it takes lots of uh, determination. And in order for me to feel ready for my show and feel fully prepared, it's very important for me to make sure I do juggle six balls. And I do bring with me and juggle three balls, but in the rare instances that I have to give my audience an amazing show, a fantastic show, maybe I drop juggling balls, maybe I have to do an amazing trick, I'll even bring eight, just to make sure I can give the best show possible. Thank you very much. Like I said, folks, all the magic and juggling you're seeing here today, it's an illusion. And to illustrate this, I'd like to teach every one of you how to do a magic trick. Who would like to see a magic trick and learn how to do one here on stage? All right, now, I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna try to do this while rapping. That's right, who here has seen magic and rapping combined before? A few of you, that's okay, that's okay. Um, we're gonna see if we can do something for the first time here today for our Can Jam event teaching a magic trick. Here we go, friends. Beats and breakfast food. I'ma tell you what I do. Rapping ain't what you signed up for, so I'll do some magic too. But breakfast food, you ask? What the heck that gotta do with what I'm spitting now? Well, stay tuned. Over here I got a box. A box is black and pretty cool. Inside a red handkerchief. You wish you had one too. My right hand is empty. Now there's nothing he's exploring. So is my left one. Wow, this trick is kind of boring. But just wait. 
here we go. Grab the red handkerchief, poking it real slow. Lead down into my hand. Grab some magic dust from the box, wham. Make the magic happen, transposition, hands be clapping. It's an egg now. Wow. It's an egg now. Dude, that guy's crazy. It's a smooth white mama chicken's egg I got from sheets. I'ma teach this trick to you with my beats. It's a fake egg. Oh my gosh, that is so risky. It's in my hand the whole time as I show them both empty. That's how the magic works. Yeah, there's really nothing to it. But stay tuned till the end for tips and tricks on how to do it. A little less red and a little less red and a little less red. Almost no more red. It's got full make time. Trick complete. Make that crowd get on their feet. But just remember two quick things before you go and spread your wings. First, <gasps> it's simple. Keep them fingers close like you about to pop a pimple. Oh, I'm so sorry. Cause if the audience sees white, they'll think your egg trick ain't so tight And you don't want that bad negative energy Uh-uh Second It's not so simple You wanna use a storied line that's nimble That's why I reach into that chest Say magic dust will do the rest And scat bing bop bing bop boom blow You got an egg Wow But if you mess up, it's okay Maybe when you show the egg is turned the wrong way I still mess things up every single day. And when I do, I give my mama a ring. One second. Hey, Ma. Oh, hi, sweetie. How are you? I I'm good. I messed up the egg. You messed up the egg trick again, didn't you? I did, yeah. It's OK, honey. You just got to prove to them it's a real egg. How do I do that? Just grab the red hole on the front. This one? Yeah, that one. And rip it off. OK. Good. Now break the egg. Uh, but Ma, I can't break I the. I am not a butt mom. You got to prove it's real. OK, love you. Bye. Love you, bobbies. All right, here we go. Beat some breakfast food, I'ma tell you what I do. Rapping ain't what you signed up for, so I'll do some magic too. Thank you. All right, friends, I'm kind of feeling lonely up here. I'm kind of getting sad. I think it's time for some of you to be involved in today's show. Who here is a super kid and wants to be super involved here on stage? Come on up. I'm looking for a couple of you. You want to come on up here? You can stay right here. You can come with me and stay right here. I'm looking for two more super fun kids. You, sir, come on up here. And you, sir, in the awesome ref jersey, you can come on up. OK. Now I'm going to need one. Actually, how about, how about this? You guys meet me on stage. I'm going to turn my microphone off so we don't get feedback. Give them a big round of applause, everybody. We're going to have so much fun. Now, I'm going to need one special person to help me out with a special job on stage. Your hand went right up. Come on up here. Give her a big round of applause. I'll tell you what. How about I give my, stretch my hands out and I'll lift you up here. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, my goodness. Round of applause, everybody. Thanks for helping me out. What's your name? Aubrey, nice to meet you. Okay, I have a special job for you, and I have a special job for you guys as well. You stay right here. Aubrey, I have a present for you. I have a drumstick. <gasps> have you ever played the drums before, Aubrey? A little, really? That's so cool. Usually people say no. Well, we're going to play the drums in front of all of our friends and family here today. How does that sound? That sounds good. Okay, I'll give this to you. You can stand right here for me, and I'll tell you what to do in a second. You four, I'm gonna give you a ring. Here you go, here you go, here you go, and here you go. Now here is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna point at you. You're gonna throw that ring, and I'm gonna catch it on my head like a seal, just like that. I oh, know. When I do this, Aubrey, when I catch that ring on my head like a seal, you're gonna whack that symbol with the force of a thousand waterfalls. How does that sound? Yeah? How long don't you give it a whack for us, Aubrey? Show us what you're made of. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. What do we think, everybody? All right, friends. I'm going to point at you. You're going to throw the ring. And then at the end, you guys are going to have a seat. And I'm going to juggle them. 
and you're gonna keep hitting that cymbal, okay? Here we go. We pause for dramatic effect. All right, here we go, folks. We gotta get warmed up, though. I don't wanna pull it. us pulling any muscles. All right, grab the ring. Okay, drive the car. Oh, yeah. Okay, and turn the car. Oh, yeah. Aubrey, you can join in if you want. And drive the car. And turn the car. Oh, yeah. Stick your hand out the window. Wait to your mom. Say, mom, look at me, I'm driving the car. Oh, yeah. Parallel park. Don't hit the curb. That would be bad. But we got insurance, so we're okay. Are you ready? Green ring on the head. Check it on the head right here. You got it, buddy. Oh, yeah. Like a frisbee. How about like that? Oh, yeah. Rock that symbol, Aubrey. Okay. I'm going to get a high five. You can have a seat. Thank you for helping me out right this way. Watch your step. Yellow ring on the head. You got it. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you what. I'm going to recalibrate. I'm going to give this back to you. I'm going to go in the audience. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. You can have a seat. Give her a big round of applause and help me out. Blue ring with the ref jersey on. Oh, my goodness. Again, you got it. Right on the head. High five. You can have a seat. And you, sir, are a drink. High five. You can have a seat. All right, Aubrey. You're going to stay here. I'm going to juggle. Every time I catch the ring on my head, you're going to whack your cymbal. Are you ready? Get ready. Whack it. Oh, yeah. Whack it. Here we go. Get ready. Whack it. Now for some tricks. And, oh, I almost got you. Pancakes here today, making pancakes for everybody, Aubrey. Oh, yeah. All right, Aubrey. Oh, my goodness, you know it. Four rings. Here we go, Aubrey. Get ready. Big high five. Oh, my goodness, Aubrey. We're going to take a huge bow. And the audience is going to go crazy. Take a bow, everybody. Aubrey, you did such a good job. You can have a seat right this way. Actually, you can go this way. That's OK. Everybody give her a big round of applause. All right, folks. I think we're going to slow it down here a little bit today and get a little bit back to the illusion. Now, as a juggler, I rely a lot on numbers. Number of times I throw, number of times I catch, number of times I get a ring on my head, number of balls I throw in the air. It's all about the numbers. And so today, I thought I'd do a magic trick with numbers for all of you. You, ma'am. How you doing? What's your name? No, no, you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Amber, nice to meet you. I have a bag of numbers written on pieces of paper in here. Do you mind reaching your hand in there and grabbing one number for me? Thank you. What does that say? Applause. I'll tell you what. Here, let me give you one more number. I'll tell you what. Try that. What does that say? Okay, that's better. 40. Okay, great. Uh, how about grab one more just to prove that there are multiple numbers in this bag? What does that number say? 20, okay, so it's safe to assume there's a bunch of different numbers in this bag, right? Okay, awesome. I'm gonna take these. I'll have you grab one number, but this time, don't look at it, okay? Take your time, it's okay. Hold on to that number. Very good. And uh, you, sir, how about you grab one number? Once again, don't look at it. What's your name? Robert. Robert. Thanks for helping me out. Okay. Now it's time for the number magic to begin. Over here I have a whiteboard, and I'm going to write some numbers on this whiteboard, and we're going to see if we can find your number. Um, you can take a look at that number, just don't tell me 
And uh, you can show your, your friends and your family, but just don't tell me that number. Take a good, long look at it. Okay, do you see that number up here? No, okay, I'll try it again. Do you see it here? No, okay, I'm gonna fill in the rest of the number. At this moment, I'm gonna need someone who has a calculator on their phone. Who here has a calculator on their phone and wants to help out, maybe an adult? You, ma'am, in the front, thank you. Um, do you have that calculator out for me? You do? Okay, great. I'm gonna come back to you in a second. In the meantime, I'm gonna fill in this number board with a bunch of random numbers. And we're gonna get the number magic going here today. Okay, do you see your number on this board, ma'am? No, okay, good. Because if you didn't see your number, it wouldn't be all that impressive. Now, um, let's see. Ma'am, you with a calculator. Do you mind, uh, let's do, do you mind adding two? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, what was your number in a loud, clear voice? 34. 34, okay. 34, number chosen at random. Now, ma'am, do you mind adding two plus seven plus 16? plus nine. In a loud, clear voice, what does that equal? 34. What about 10 plus 15 plus four plus five? Ten plus 15 plus four plus five. 34. Interesting, I tell you what, down across 16 plus nine is 25 plus six is 31 plus 3 is 34. Up, down, any way you want to add it, it equals 34 to a random chosen, not, or a random chosen number. You, ma'am. 1, 2, 3, or 4? Four? 4? Okay. 11 plus 14 is 25. Plus 1 is 26. Plus 8 is 34. You, ma'am, in the front row. Uh, 1, 2, 3, or 4? Four? 4. 13 plus 3 is 16. Plus 10 is 26. Plus 8 is 34. Four. Now, I'll tell you what, that's some number magic, but you, sir, in the second row, you can look at your number now, and uh, if you don't mind, in a loud, clear voice, what is that number? It's not a number. Is it a word? I'm getting a little, a little tired of the numbers. That checks out. In a loud, clear voice, what was that word? Applause. Thank you very much. I'll tell you what, folks, I think it's time to get some more of you involved here on stage today. I only need one person, and here's the catch. I'm going to turn this person into a professional juggler. Here we go. Sway, watch your step. Thanks for helping me out here today. All right, we're going to come right this way. You can take a step or a stand right here. Um, what's your name, sir? Hayden, and uh, where do you work? <laughs> you don't work. That's okay, I guess. How old are you? I'm 11. 11. Okay, that would make sense, Hayden. Um, so I'm going to turn you into a professional juggler here today. How does that sound? That sounds good. Okay, Hayden. Now, there are a couple important steps in being a professional juggler. The first one, Hayden, is to wear the proper juggling protection. For you today, Hayden, I have the proper juggling hat with an antenna. I'm gonna put this on your head. This will protect you from any flying objects through the air, in the sky, or bouncing up from the floor, and your noggin will be safe. Now, there's a second important step, Hayden, in any professional juggler career, and that is the juggling prop. And for you today, Hayden, I have the ancient art of Chinese plate spinning. That's right, I'm gonna give you this. You're gonna hold that in the air. Very good. I'm gonna spin this plate. It's gonna go on that stick. You're gonna balance it, and the audience is gonna go crazy. I know. We're gonna see if this works. Now, there's a third step in any professional juggler's career, Hayden. Do you know what that is? That is to juggle. Are you ready for this? Audience, are we ready? Here we go. Oh, there we go. Plate one, Hayden, get ready. 
plate one. All right, Hayden, look at the audience. Give them a huge smile. Most professional jugglers say you need to juggle at least three of whatever you're juggling. I'm gonna give you this. You're gonna turn and give the audience a big smile. We're gonna keep the juggling going here today. All right, we got another plate, Hayden. We're gonna go for plate number two. Plate number, oh my goodness. Plate number two, Hayden. Plate number two. All right, Hayden, third one. On the dome piece, on the noggin, you're protected, so it's okay. One, two. Oh man, Hayden. Oh man, one, two, three, play Hayden, everybody. Now, Hayden, most professional jugglers want to receive a world record. The current world record for plate spinning is about six and a half hours, so I'm gonna leave you here. We're gonna keep going. I'm just kidding. One, two, three plates. Hayden, everybody. I'll take these. I actually have a prize for you, Hayden. Oh, I'm so sorry. You buckled it. Thank you. I'll take this. Okay, Hayden. I actually have a prize for you, buddy. Since you were so kind in helping me out here today, I brought with me my wonderful coloring book just for you. Do you like to color, Hayden? You like to draw. That's pretty cool. Okay, well, this coloring book is uh, a little bit different than your normal coloring book. It has different stuff that you'll see in it, like a magician or a juggler or someone balloon twisting. But you don't actually need crayons to color this. You see, if you look around your audience and you say, everybody, take the color off your shirt. I see some red, I see some blue, some orange. Take the color off your shirt, hold it in the air, and throw it at the book. Toss, 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 and stop, just like that, Hayden. Every single page in the book is now colored. I know, but here's the interesting thing, Hayden. If I try to take the color out of the book and make the color go away, the book just goes empty and I can't do the trick again. <gasps> this is gonna be my gift for you, Hayden. Come to my magic shop. It'll be somewhere out near the egg hunt. I have the red pants on. You'll be able to find me and I'll actually teach you how to do that magic trick. You can have a seat. Everybody give Hayden a big round of applause. All right, folks, we're gonna keep the magic and the show rolling here today, but I thought that I'd actually bring with me a part of what's called the Trick of the Month Club. So I'm a part of a club that is, it teaches me how to do a new magic trick every month. And I thought I'd bring this, I haven't quite learned it yet, but I thought we'd learn it together. How does that sound? Yeah, okay, we'll learn a new magic trick here today. Hello, and thank you for purchasing this amazing magic trick. Your first a voice in the Trick of the Month Club series, brought to you by the Acme Magic Company of Walla Walla, Washington. This month's trick is the vanishing bandana. Perfect. The number one rule in magic is to never tell how a trick is done. So, before we begin, everyone present must take the magician's oath. Everyone raise your right hand and repeat after me. I. I. State your name. This Boston. Promise. Promise. To never ever. To never ever. Tell the secret. Tell the secret. Of the vanishing bandana trick. Of the vanishing bandana trick. I also promise. I also promise. To never ever. To never ever. Repeat. Repeat. What other people tell me to say. What other people tell me to. I for, just forget and it. And now, let's <laughs> get started. Okay. For this mystery, we've supplied all you will need in the box. Oh, yeah. Step one. Open the box we have sent you. You should find a square cloth. Lovely. And a yellow bandana. Yellow bandana. <laughs> we'll start with a yellow bandana. Uh, <laughs> um, there's, no, there's not a yellow... Please pay attention. Okay, um, okay, we'll just go with Step it. Step two. Pick up the yellow bandana and fold it in half. Oh no. That's right. I said fold it in half. Uh, okay. <laughs> Step three. Uh, okay. Fold the bandana one more time. Oh wow. Okay. Step Wiki. four. Take oh. the folded bandana and secretly hide it in your left hand. 
Ooh, um. Remember to keep your hand in a natural position. Um. <laughs> this secret move is called hiding it in your left hand. Okay, you can't see anything. Now that you've learned to hide it in your left hand, we can continue. Okay. Step five. Unfold the bandana and wave it up and down to prove to your audience that this is a real bandana. Oh, this is, it's real. <laughs> if yeah. anyone from the audience does not believe it to be a real bandana, ask someone to wipe their uh, face with it. Ma'am, wipe your face, it's a real bandana. Or no, no, blow no, no. Blow your nose in the banana. No, Step no, six. it's okay. Pick up the square yeah. cloth and gather the four corners to form a makeshift bag. Ah, oh, I can do that. Step seven. Use your free hand to fold the bandana along the creases you made earlier. Okay. Drop the bandana in the makeshift bag. All right. Step eight. From the outside of the bag, squeeze the bandana into a small little bowl. Here, squeeze this for me. Just squeeze it in there. Make sure it's all the banana. What the audience doesn't know That's okay. is that you didn't That's really okay. drop the bandana into the bag. Oh. You had actually hidden it in your left hand. That's why you were shaking your head. Remember hiding it in your left hand that you practiced earlier? Oh, the palm. <laughs> Keep your left hand uh -huh. in a natural position. Okay. Step nine. Make a magical gesture over the bag. Fling open the cloth to show that the bandana has vanished. Uh. <laughs> Step 10. Take a bow. You should now receive a well-deserved round of applause. Okay, here we go. Oh, yes, we have no bananas. We have no bananas. Are you guys having fun today? And by now, I think you've realized how easy it is for our eyes and our minds to play tricks on us. You see, there are many tricks in this world that cause us to get tripped up. We may think that if we go to this one place or be friends with this one group of people or get this one thing, that we may be happy. And we may even go to this one place or be friends with this one group of people only to realize it was all just an illusion. It didn't give us the happiness and satisfaction that we thought it would. So in a world of illusions, is there anything we know is true and is real? Well, I'm here today, friends, to tell you that Jesus Christ is true and he is real and he has an awesome plan for each and every one of your lives. Amen? I'm going to tell you a story today. The story of the day that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. These feather plumes will help me tell that story. Now, in the Bible, the Bible says that Jesus was perfect. He never sinned, he never made any mistakes, he never hurt anyone. And today, Jesus will be represented by this red plume. Now, some of you may be kind of confused. After all, the Bible says that the color red is the color of sin. So if Jesus never sinned, why is he the color red? Well, the amazing thing is, is that when Jesus was on the cross that day, he wasn't there because of anything he did. He was there to take on the sin of the world and the sin of you and me. And three days later, he rose, wiping our sins as white as snow. You see, friends, this is why we celebrate Easter. But we also celebrate Easter for another reason. You see, there was two other people with Jesus on the cross that day. Now, the Bible refers to these people as thieves. They sinned. They weren't perfect like Jesus. They made mistakes. They messed up. And while one of those thieves was on the cross with Jesus that day, he turned to Jesus and he said, Jesus, remember me. Forgive me. Now, I don't know, but if, if, if I was Jesus, I might have a hard time forgiving this man for his sins. After all, I might say something like, well, if you can hop down from that cross and right some of the wrongs or help some of the people that you've hurt, then maybe, just maybe, I could forgive you. You see, friends, this is how some of us view forgiveness. But the amazing thing is that that's not all what Jesus told this man that day. He said, for I tell you the truth, today you'll be spending eternity with me in heaven. You 
See, friends, this is also why we celebrate Easter. We celebrate Easter because of God's grace and God's forgiveness over our lives and over our sins. But there's one thing important to mention, and that is that sometimes some people want to live their whole life like this guy. They want to do whatever they want to do. They want to sin. They want to make as many mistakes as they want to make. And at the last second, turn to Jesus and say, Jesus, forgive me, remember me. But we know that's not how we're supposed to live. We know this because there was a second man with Jesus on the cross that day. Now, this man was like the first thief. He sinned, he made mistakes, he wasn't perfect like Jesus. And while he was on the cross, if you think about it, he must have known he was so close to Jesus. All he had to do was what the first man did and say, Jesus, remember me, forgive me for my sins. But after all, and you must have known, he must have known he was so close to death as well, but at the end of the day, he ended up not asking Jesus for forgiveness, and as a result, did not spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. You see, friends, we all have a choice. Do we do what the first man did and accept Jesus' forgiveness in our lives, or do we do what the second man did? You see, friends, this is a choice that I've made a long time ago. And as a result, Jesus has done some pretty cool things in my life. I'm gonna move some stuff out of the way here because things are gonna get kinda crazy. Here we go. Thank you, thank you very much. This was the first thing that I ever learned. Before the juggling, before the illusion and the magic, this is the first thing I ever learned. This is called a seer wheel, C-Y-R. It was invented and popularized by a man in the late 1800s, 1900s for circus audiences and uh, circus performers around the world. It's made of five pieces of hollowed out steel, all connected and covered in a rubber PVC coating. And that was the first thing that I ever learned. You see, friends, the story of me becoming a performer isn't as though as it may seem. When I was around seven years old, I was diagnosed with something called Tourette syndrome. Now, for, for those of you who don't know what Tourette syndrome is, it's just a fancy name or way for saying that sometimes my body does things that I don't want it to do. These things are called ticks. So sometimes you'll see me shake my head or roll my eyes or touch my face. And while these ticks aren't as bad as they used to be, they were really bad when I was in elementary school. I even had one tick that caused me to shake my head back and forth so much that I couldn't read because of it. You see, friends, I used to think that my Tourette's held me back. I used to think it kept me from being the person that God called me to be. Kids would say things like, 
Boston, why are you rolling your eyes at me? That's weird, or why are you touching your face so much? I would even get bullied sometimes because of it. You see, friends, I also don't think that I'm alone in this room with a story of a struggle. I believe many of us have our own struggles as well. I believe many of us may be struggling with anxiety or depression or a hard home life or learning struggles at school or trouble fitting in. Or maybe you're just trying to find your place in the world like I was. But the amazing thing is, is that if you choose to trust God with your struggle and your setbacks, he can do amazing things with your life. The day I learned this was the day that Jesus called me to be a performer. Now, this is a super long story and involves a lot of people in my life. But to make the long story short, when, God, when I first felt God call me to be a performer, I said no. I said, God, what if I drop juggling balls on stage? What if I mess up a trick and the audience laughs at me? What if I have a tick on stage? You see, friends, I was scared. But eventually, I said yes. And after I said yes and pursued a career in learning under other people and learning how to do all these tricks you see me do here today, I discovered something. I discovered that if I focus on my stage movement, my connection with you, the audience, and my tricks, my ticks got better. I discovered something else too, and that is that whenever I'm learning new routines or new illusions, I'm able to learn them faster than many other performers. This is because I grew up moving all the time. My mom could tell you countless stories of me doing front flips off the deck or kick flips on a skateboard down the driveway, and I don't know if I knew it at the time, but growing up, I was always learning how to do things with my body when it felt like I couldn't control my body. And when I was learning these things, it was helping my tics go away. You see, friends, I don't tell you any of this to brag or to boast, but rather to tell you that God can use you no matter your story. I know this because the Bible is full of countless stories of God using broken people. After all, Abraham was old. Jonah was stuck in a whale. David killed a man. And John the Baptist ate bugs. You see, friends, the important thing to know about Jesus is that if you trust him with your story, you trust him with your life, and you give him your struggles, he can turn your life into something amazing if you choose to trust him. Thank you very much, friends. Now, friends, that is typically where I choose to end my show. Now, I'm going to, at this point, invite the pastor up, but there's going to be a finale outside with uh, something a little bit dangerous. So we're going to keep the service moving. We're going to keep talking about God's love, God's grace, and um, I'm happy that I got to share my story with you here today, but like I said, we're going to keep the action moving later. I'll still be with you here today. I'll be out there to talk with any of you that want to hear more about my story um, but I appreciate you listening. You are a great audience. Uh, and at this point, I'd like to invite the pastor up. Thank you. Awesome. Let's hear it for Boston Backert. Thank you so much. He's done a wonderful job. And uh, in just, just a moment, we're going to have some instructions, but we do want to just provide people with an opportunity this morning. Um, as you've maybe heard throughout that this is uh, Palm Sunday. This is a day where um, the, what the Bible teaches us is that when Jesus came to Jerusalem, Jesus would soon be put on a cross for the sins of the world and would three days later resurrect from the dead. But before then, on Palm Sunday, he came into Jerusalem and people celebrated him as king and they would wave their palms and all that as he would come. But he came as one, not necessarily on a horse, he came on a donkey. That kind of showed us that he humbled himself enough to be one of us, to come amongst us, to walk with us, to see our struggles, to, to, to see our pain, the things that we walk through in life, things we didn't ask for. And he was willing to walk with us and to show us who he was, to show us the best example that we could ab absolutely ever see in this planet, and that was being God the Father. And so... 
this morning we want to provide you with an opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. And this is what, what the Bible teaches. This is something we've been teaching here at our church, especially last week. We've been going through the Gospel of Matthew. And the very simple message Jesus preached to people was this, is that he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. And what that simply means is that word repent means this, is that we confess and profess. It's both. We talked about it last week about confessing. It's about saying, Jesus, I am a sinner in need of a savior. It is also meaning I'm professing he is Lord so that now he is in control over my life. I am no longer in control of my own. I'm going to lay it down because he laid it down for me. Some people can look at that word as a negative word. I look at it as a positive. It's because I don't have to live my life on my own and I don't have to worry about what happens after my life. I know I will be with God because I'm following through on something in his word, what he told me to do. This is what he also said. He said, the kingdom of heaven is near. Didn't say necessarily accepted by people. It just said near. You heard Boston share two thieves on the cross, one accepted, one rejected. The kingdom of heaven was near those two individuals, but only one received it into their life. This is what Jesus has called us to do. He's called us to confess and profess, to confess that we are a sinner in need of a savior and to profess that he is Lord and we will follow him all the days of our life. It's a very simple message and it's a very clear one. And so this morning we wanna give you that opportunity. I'm not asking if you go to church today, we're glad you're here. I'm not asking if you read your Bible, that's wonderful. I'm not asking if you pray, that's wonderful. But Jesus said simply this, to follow him, to follow him. It, it is an event, but it's also a lifelong journey of following him. Jesus will change you in the moment, but he will also change you for the rest of your life. It is both. It happens in the moment, but it continues to happen the rest of your entire life. There are people here today who have received the Lord Jesus Christ, and they were 70, 80 years old. There's people here today who have received Jesus Christ in their 40s and 50s. And there's people here today in their 20s who have given their life to Jesus. Even people here today who gave their life to Jesus when they were five and six years old. They knew they needed a Savior and they needed a Lord. And we want to give you that opportunity this morning. So I'm just going to ask you as best as you can to bow your heads with me because we want to pray for you. We also just want to give you this opportunity. The Bible says very clearly to confess with your mouth he is Lord and believe in your heart he's risen from the dead and you will be saved and that he wants to live in you. And this morning as a way to do what Jesus said to say confess and profess he is Lord. Here's how we simply want to do this today. If you want to receive Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior or rededicate your life to Jesus, you feel the tugging of your heart, God tugging on your heart that you need to do this. Whether you're a child or a parent or grandparent, we want to give you the opportunity. Just simply raise up your hand right now. I'm not going to call you out by name. We just want to know if there's anybody here today that would like to receive Jesus Christ. Just slip up your hand rather quickly. We're just trying to respect the moment. Thank you so much. We're going to give you a couple more moments just to slip up your hand. The Bible says that he will honor you taking him at his word. He's going to take you at it. You're going to take him at his word. And the Bible says this, heaven rejoices over one sinner who comes to know Christ. And I'm so thankful I made that decision. So just keep your hand up. Give you a couple more moments if you haven't done it. Amen. Everybody in here is going to say a prayer together for these folks that have lifted their hands. Everybody say it with them to encourage them this morning. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. I confess that I have fallen short. And I need Jesus as my Savior. I also profess today that he will be my Lord all the days of my life. And that I will continue to live for him with his help in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. Can we give a round of applause for those today? What a wonderful moment. Here's what I will suggest to those that lifted their hand this morning is simply this, or, or this could be also for those who didn't, 
that you get plugged into a church, you find a place, a family, a spiritual family that can walk with you and help you grow. Because here's one thing I will know about following Jesus is that I cannot do this alone. Even as a pastor, there have been plenty of days where I wanted to follow Jesus and I do that. But there are also plenty of days where I woke up and I didn't want to do it anymore because of life situations and circumstances. It happens to all of us. And it, will, it can also happen to you. But here's the cool thing, is when a church is there, the church is there, the people of God, we call it, they are there to help support you, to pray for you, and to walk with you in those tough moments so that you can share with them saying, hey, today or this week or this month, this year has been awful. And they'll say, okay, let's pray. Let's walk. We're going to walk with you in these moments. And we're going to check in on you. I can't tell you how encouraging that is to have. So whether it's this place, there are other plenty of churches in this county that are wonderful people, wonderful pastors. We encourage you to find a place that can walk with you. We believe in that. We believe that it is so critical in your journey. This morning, as we get, begin to transition, for those who did receive Christ, I want to, everybody, everybody can really do this. Everybody just pull out this card that you have, okay? Pull it out. Everybody's going to need to turn this in in just a moment. But if you did receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, there's a spot right on the front of the card that you can just check that off for us. That'll help us out tremendously. We're not going to bombard you with emails, anything like that. We just want to be able to say, hey, you know, we're praying for you. If there's anything that we can do to help you, please let us know. Very simple, okay? Um, the rest of us this morning have that filled out. What you're going to do, we're going to have the ushers, if they can begin to make their way down the aisle. If you can hand that in to the nearest part of the aisle, whether it's on your right or left, hand that in to somebody that is near the aisle. And what they're going to do is drop that into the box, okay? We're going to give you just a moment to do that, so make sure... You have that filled out for your family. Okay, if again, if you pre-registered, you just need your name on there. If there's other additional things you want to write on there, there's prayer requests on the back. Feel free to do that this morning. But hand that in to the nearest aisle. And then we're going to provide some instructions as to how we're going to draw for that. But we're going to give you just a few moments to do that today. Make sure you get that in. As, as you do that today, I want to give you some instructions to kind of help as people are turning these in, ushers continue to keep going up and down the aisle. We're going to try to, I know some people are doing it right now. Um, a couple of things. As you walk out today in the lobby, there's some palms there. It's a way to celebrate Palm Sunday. Feel free to take one as you go outside. When you walk outside, you're going to go out the main doors to the left along the sidewalk. Parents just kind of want to make sure that you walk with your kids because there is a parking lot there, and we want to make sure everybody's safe. We're going to have people there to guide people. Uh, but we want to make sure, I know as I have two kids myself, you turn your head for one second, boom, they're gone, all right? They're already performing the 100-yard dash, okay? And so um, we want to make sure we're trying to provide as safe of a place to get to the back as, as best we can. But if you go out the main doors to the left, down the sidewalk, you'll get there. If you don't have an Easter basket, you would like one, there will be some volunteers that have some extra bags available for you, okay? Also, we do have a petting zoo Okay, so parents, please listen to this part. If you want your child to pet an animal out there or take a picture, you do have to sign a waiver. The people that are providing this have a waiver for you to sign. Hopefully, maybe you've signed that before this. If not, we'll make sure we'll provide you one, but make sure your child, your child cannot go to the animal unless they have proof that you have signed that waiver. That is something that they have requested, the people that we brought in today. So make sure you do that. All, and as the ushers make their way to the front, you can bring those cards up to me. And we'll, we'll do a drawing. This, the other thing that we'll be doing today is, folks, is as we do our Easter egg hunts, we have age groups. So parents, if you can look at the age groups, we're going to have different ages, young kids, uh, middle school age, teenager age, all that kind of stuff. So pay attention to that. We're going to do our best to have certain groups go at one time, but we know that some of you, like myself, have additional kids that have different age groups, so we're going to try to balance that, where we'll have the young, young, little ones go first, we'll provide some time, then we'll start the other one so parents can make it to the other one for their other child, and all that good stuff. As you collect eggs, okay, there's going to be, a, there's going to be prizes inside those eggs. You'll need to go to the table that represents the color, okay, so if it's a purple slip, 
you go to the purple tablecloth or yellow slip. I'm not sure what colors are out there, but just help me out. If it's yellow, go to the yellow table, those kinds of things. Okay. Now, as you put those bags or as you get your eggs, you're going to take your eggs. You're going to get your empty eggs. You're going to take it to a volunteer. Okay. Make sure you check for prizes. They're going to exchange your empty eggs for candy. So that way, all these kids that are here today get a good amount because we would hate for one child to go home with one piece of candy, okay? This is just to keep your sanity at home today, amen? And all the parents say amen to that, right? So that you have all your kids are happy. Everybody gets a, a good amount of candy, all right? So that's why we do that, but there are prizes inside those empty eggs. Okay, um, I believe that is all the major announcements we need to have. Once we dismiss from here, we're gonna give you about 15 minutes. There's gonna be a countdown, don't worry. It's just to get you out the door. We're going to make sure we sweep the building and make sure everybody's out, okay, before we actually perform the egg hunt. We're not going to leave somebody behind. We promise, all right? All right. So I think we got all the wonderful cards in here today. Can I have one of, one of the kids come and draw for this? Who do, what do you want to do first? you want to do movie theater, Hershey Park, or Box Hill? Hershey Park? All right. We're going with Hershey Park because... The kids that were closest to the stage is the only ones I can hear. Amen. All right. All right. Let's go. Uh, right here. Come up here. Right there. Yes. You with your hand. Come here. All right. He's going he's gonna to draw this for us. His, his family's hoping that they draw their own name, but we'll see. All right. Go ahead and draw. Pick a card. Any card. All right. Let me see that. This is for Hershey Park. We have, okay, I'm sorry if I butcher your name. I promise I did not mean to. Rachel Bergstrom. Rachel Bergstrom from Rising Sun. Let's give it up for Rachel. For Hershey Park, all right. Thank you, buddy. You appreciate it. You can have a seat. Hershey Park, way to go, Rachel. Enjoy. All right, next we will do the Box Hill Pizzeria. You right there in the middle. Come here. Kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You with the jacket. Yep, yep, yep. Come on. You with the jacket. Yep, yep. Keep coming. Keep coming. You're almost there. There we go. All right, pick one for me. Can't look, can't look, can't look, can't look. There you go. He closed his eyes. Praise the Lord. James Thompson. James Thompson. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. I know, I know. James Thompson. Is James in the building? You got to be here. Oh, here he comes. James, James coming. All right, we got the $100 gift card to Box Hill. That's a great place. Amen. Box Hill Pizzeria. Thank you, Box Hill, for providing that for us. There you go. Congratulations. All right, I need one more helper. Let's go over here. Are you in the front row? Yes, yes, come up here. All right, you got to, can't, can't look. You got to, got to just go for it. Believe in faith. Amen. There you go. We have Misty Winkler with a gift card to the movie theater. Misty Winkler. Misty, where is Misty today? Is she coming? Oh, there she is. Let's give Misty a round of applause as she comes. Here you go. Congratulations. Absolutely enjoy. All right. Like Boston said, everybody, Boston's going to be out there. He's going to be performing a final act. It involves some things that are sharp, so it's going to be really cool to watch that. And so thank you so much. If we're going to have our prayer teams come forward at this time, if you would like prayer before you leave, trust me, we're not going to start out without you. We're going to have a couple of prayer teams that are make their way up here quickly. If you need prayer before you leave today about any situation, Make sure you come and see them. They're going to be right up front. They'll be wearing lanyards and such. We appreciate you. You can go ahead and stand to your feet. Let me pray for you, and then we'll, we'll head out. Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've done. Be with us and keep us safe. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. If you need prayer, make your way up front. Otherwise, grab your kids and head outside along the sidewalk. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Fam Jam event.